All right, hey, welcome back to Insurance Influencers. We find someone in freaking power influence in the industry and we bring them on the show to help you. And today I got, you know what? And before I talk about my buddy here, the, the 6'9 Greek freak of marketing, Greek okay? Freak. I'm not Greek, but okay. You know what? It's kind of, y- y- they're out there watching this thinking, okay, you know, Cody, Cody built a $6 million lead generation company. He must be a absolute marketing baller, okay? Also, we've, you know, the, the conference we're scaling is now the largest independent insurance agent training conference for insurance agents in the industry, in the world, really, uh, very quickly. Um, they have, you know, the number one YouTube channel and all this stuff. So you would think, like, I'm just, like, a marketing legend of the insurance industry. However... I thought that till I met my good buddy Landon. Okay, he's a marketing freaking baller. Well, thanks for saying that, man. A legend. I appreciate that. And I'm telling you, if you aren't working with us, you're missing out. Okay. Well, so, thanks for saying that, man. You got it, man, dude. You're, you're a uh, you are influencing the industry in the way that you are going about insurance marketing. Well, it's just different these days. I feel I feel like there's a massive digital shift. Yeah. Um, that's happening. Everybody that I know in the insurance industry is moving into digital in some form or fashion, mm-hmm. whether it's a small percentage of their budget Dude. or a major percentage of yeah. their budget. And we're, so, we're talking to like, we're talking to no joke, like hundred million dollar companies. Oh, bigger than that. Got Billion yeah. dollar companies every day. Yeah. And they are making massive shifts. It is. I mean, it's a big market shift that's happening and, and that's causing a lot of is- issues on Facebook specifically, because that's right yeah. now the lowest hanging fruit sure. um, in the digital marketing space. Yep. But uh, yeah, man, I mean, you know, whenever I, I, I used to own a, an advertising agency that, you know, we did $4 million a year in, in management fees. We had no specialty though. Yep. So you were a client of mine. That's how we met in the first place. And the more the digital marketing world evolves, it's mm-hmm. going to be like the, 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 the lawyer that has to specialize. The digital marketer has to specialize. I can't imagine if I ever was to compete, if we were ever to compete on a digital marketing project with someone that didn't specialize in insurance, we will win 100% of the time. Oh, easy. It's totally different. Even when they do specialize in insurance, Dude, we still freaking win. It's man. totally different. To- yeah. Insurance marketing is completely different than general marketing. And the reason is, is because insurance marketing is 100% based around leads, cost per lead, lead yeah. volume, lead quality. And really that's not the case for a lot of business industries specifically. Before we continue to dive in, I had an idea. Okay. Okay. I, if, I, if I'm them watching this already, I'm like, holy crap, I want to talk to that dude. Okay. Correct? Yes, absolutely. Right? I mean, and that's happening. Correct? It is. Okay. Absolutely. So if they wanted to do that, is there like a link that There's we can a link. add? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to add it. You're going to click it. You're going to schedule a free strategy session with Landon to talk about the struggles you're having, the problems, and what we can do to fix it. Yeah, we'll just go through an unbiased sort of walkthrough of your digital marketing footprint um, yeah. and talk about your budget, talk about your results, whatever. I mean, you Good. know, we can do search engine optimization, web development, yeah. social, whatever. On that note, where how should we pivot? Because this interview and how your influence in the industry can go, because this is, this is, I'm interviewing you, can okay. go a lot of different ways. Well, you mean for this call, this, yeah. this particular, what I feel like is interesting right now is search engine optimization, the, really very interesting. The reason yeah. I think that's interesting is because one of the biggest things that I hear people say is how do I diversify my lead source from social? Because a mm. lot of people are spending, you know, when it comes to their digital marketing budget, let's just say that's 20 to 30% of their overall marketing budget or 50, whatever most of that is going towards social. And the reason is because it's the easiest way to scoop up leads, yep. right? But what's happening is is, is the digital marketing principles like search engine optimization and good website and blogging and content creation, um, that is, it's low hanging fruit. That's why you see Choice Mutual and some of these guys yeah, that are yeah. scooping up hundreds of policies a year. And all it is is a final expense producer that figured out SEO. Right. And when you look at Boomer Benefits and you look at some of these websites that are getting thousands of clients a year through lead gen on their website through content marketing, you realize that it's a low bar really in the insurance industry. Most people are just scooping up the social leads, but they don't know anything about search engine optimization. That's what I think is interesting right now. And, and, and we seem to be, we're noticing, I'm noticing a trend of people coming to you saying, hey, we we want to be on the cutting edge of, 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 of getting thousands, if not tens of thousands of organic leads every year. Yeah, well, and, and that's, 
doable. I mean, I, I can point you to websites that are not that innovative and, and large that are getting thousands of policies a year just because yeah. they've been doing SEO for a couple of years. And, you know, it's not the S search engine optimization. The reason it's not taken uh, hold in the insurance industry mm -hmm. specifically is because it doesn't provide immediate results, yeah. you know, like social does. I mean, she, she do a social campaign. We'll be generating X amount of leads in 48 hours. You know what I'm saying? Right. With SEO, it takes time. So so basically, people you, a lot of times are hand to mouth. But you can only do that for so long, not to mention social is changing. Facebook's making it tougher with the privacy concerns. Totally. Um, it's more expensive with AEP right now and also the holidays. I mean, our cost per leads are increasing. So you want to be diversified, really. Yeah. I, I, made, I made one mistake when I started this interview. What was that? You know what it was? What? I'm telling on myself. What do you mean? I didn't. I just assumed that everyone that knows me knows you. It's true. And maybe they don't. They may not. Maybe they don't, right? <laughs> so Landon McCarter. Yes. Co-founder and partner with me in Secure Agent Marketing. Yes, sir. It's a marketing company that is is working with at least the top three final expense call centers in the country. Yep. We know that for a fact. Yep. Uh, we're actually going... I forgot we're going to in, in, here in about a couple of weeks, I think, to meet with a major insurance carrier that's doing billions a year in premium, yep. and they want us to help them with yep. the marketing, yep. which is strong. Okay, we, yeah, and, and multiple other IMOs that we work with, um, yeah. or agents, field forces, whatever. What, what, why marketing for you? To well, like take it away from that and let them introduce, you know. We did jump ahead, didn't we? Yeah, I did. But, so, you know, I well, maybe, assumed you were 8%. 8 I assumed you saw that's true, our 1,500 videos. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Well, so why marketing? Why, why marketing for me? I, first off, I got my degree in marketing from Missouri State. So I've always been in sales. Sales and marketing go hand to hand. You can't sell without leads. You can't get leads without marketing. So mm. a good salesman has a good marketer on their, in their pocket always. Yeah. Or they are a good marketer. Yep. Like if, you know, we interviewed James Nevins yesterday. You know, he's just a great salesman that understands marketing. Wouldn't you know, he's got a successful business. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's like the, the people, you know, marketing and sales skills are the two most important things in growing a large insurance business, I believe. Yeah. Or maybe you would agree? Oh, dude. Okay. For real. So, you know. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a secret sauce. I, I love marketing because I, I learned a long time ago, and it doesn't always work out this way, but, you know, marketing is, if I could figure out a way for you to give me a dollar and I can give you back two, you're going to give me a lot of dollars. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Well, and even to add to that point, I've gotten to where I'm so confident in our marketing now that I just increased our budget for inbound lead flow this morning by about, nobody even knows this. My wife, Lauren, don't even know it. <laughs> By about 120 grand a year. Okay. This morning. Okay. Because I'm so confident in our marketing and our processes and our systems. Well, you, you do. Know? We do get about 250 to about 350 inbound leads a week of insurance agents contacting us for coaching leads yep. for marketing whatever. Which so. we're, you're going to be talking about and sharing with people at your SEO masterclass. Yeah, yeah, you can promote that, that December 4th? Yes, December 4th at Good. 4 p.m. We'll do a link to that. Keith, don't forget to put a link in the description there. And even if they can't attend, they're gonna get the recording for life. That's for true. The, so so, so the, the, the point is, you need to be on that. If, and you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna clarify a little bit. If you don't want thousands of passive leads a year for without spending advertising dollars, Correct then this isn't for you. Yeah, well, what I'm gonna teach on that class, if that's where we're gonna go now, is there's, I'm gonna demystify search engine optimization because they're really, it, it's not as complex as it once was from a technical perspective. Meaning you don't need to have uh, an understanding of web development to know a bulk of what SEO actually is. Yeah, because it is, it, it is super daunting. Well, you think, you think, about you think Google and they got the search engine robots that are going to call your sites or look at all these technical things. And yes, there is a, absolutely a component of technical SEO and on-page SEO, and mm -hmm. that's part of it. But there's also a major, what I call content first strategy. And I've done a video on content first SEO yep. and that's how you get results. And I can show you over and over and over examples of the insurance industry that's content first SEO that just kills it. And so what I'm going to do is break down, I'm going to demystify SEO. I'm going to teach how to actually uh, how to do it yourself for the most part and understand, I always said this a hundred times, mm -hmm. what is north? I'm going to teach you yeah. what north is on SEO so you kind of aren't getting led astray by the 199 social uh, package that you saw f that also does SEO and that's all that crap, you know, but there, there's that's not north, I can t promise you that. Yeah, um, we see so many of those and you even said, dude, we could sell them, but we're not going to deliver anything, so what's the point? No, we're just going to be taking people's money, so that's not what we do. I will teach you how to make 
if you can execute what I'm going to say, it's worth probably $800 a month in SEO. Wow. You know, if you can implement. Now, that's the problem. $9,600. So, so that 397 ticket is going to be worth about 96 k over the next 10 years. Sure, yeah. And actually, I mean, it's more yeah. because you're just saving the money in SEO costs, but that doesn't mean that you're not picking up those additional thousands of leads for free. Exactly. That's not including the business that you close from Correct. leads. I mean, I was Correct. looking at an analytics account of a, of a search engine optimization Medicare site that we were doing, and I think in one week they were getting like 14 uh, like just passive leads through the site, which they yeah. never got before. And this particular agency that I'm working with, I looked at their Facebook feed and they were bragging that they wrote 38 Medicare policies in two days between two guys. It's crazy. Yeah. And it's all passive leads. There was no like active marketing going, feeding that. It was, it was just websites and walk-ins and all that. Now they are, they're an existing business, so it's yeah. not like you can just start a Medicare shop and get there. Right. Um, but you know how it goes, man. You know, you gotta yeah. build, you gotta build something. And that's what SEO is, is building for the future. Did you always know you would, uh, did you, is it, is it in your DNA, you know, like to just, just to be such an influencer and a baller? Like where, where'd that, where'd that come from? No, it's not. The, the, what I love is, um, the, I appreciate and, you saying and, that. And you love, he I appreciate loves you what I do that, that, right? It really, what I find is, is if you want to be a good marketer, you got to go with what's working. And I started in direct mail. Um, and then I evolved into digital. I still, direct mail is great. Like I'm not sure, you know, whatever. There's still a lot of people that make a lot of money uh, on direct mail, but I found that digital. I think digital, it's wonderful. I just don't happen to use any of it. Well, and it, it's just not as, it's flexible. It's not as, you can't pivot, you can't adjust. You're like all in on certain budgets that it may or may not work. Whereas, you know, with digital, you can kind of pivot quickly if you're starting to see things aren't working. So, uh, but also just digital is the future. We all know that. Mm -hmm. And so, um, not not to mention more and more of the insurance industry is going towards uh, phone sales, mm -hmm. which is, you yeah. know, multi-state. Well, how do you, there's no way to reach multi-state audiences effectively unless you're going to spend tons of money on TV and radio and you're not going to do that direct mail. You're not mailing the state. You know what I'm saying? So you're, even that's the, your options. Even the major players that, that you're helping and influencing now, um, as I keep using that word since that's the name of the show, are shifting. Well, just to give you an example, I mean, we, I, I, uh, two days ago, I met with the lead developer for one of the largest um, Medicare call centers, and we just collaborated and had fun, man. Like, yeah. it's so, the industry's so big. Like, it wasn't like, my way's better than your way, and your way's better than my yeah. way, so let me let me show you how to do it right. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 what are you doing? What, what? Here's my videos. You bring up a good point. Some people have a guy. Yeah. Some people have a marketing department. Some people have a marketing team, et cetera. Yeah. And the good thing about you is that they don't, you're not coming in to change everything or replace everything. Replace the internal team. Uh uh. That's you the last You can actually thing. help provide ideas and run alongside the team. It's difficult for, I wouldn't, it was, it is not advised to try and outsource all of your marketing to an independent company. All of the successful mm -hmm. relationships that I have, yeah. there's a lead manager, a lead developer, a marketer, yeah. whatever, that I'm just being leaned on as another outside resource, because Coach Burt says it all the time. You gotta have somebody outside of the picture frame to kind of see what's going on. Yeah. And since we do oh, about seven figures of ad spend a month in digital marketing and insurance industry, we learn a few things along the way. Yeah. And so not we're not just working in this one space, this one industry, this one market. So we're leaned on quite a bit from a, what's going on in the industry yeah. perspective, you know, and that adds that alone, you know, I, I know we have retainers built out for some of these clients right now that I know they're not keeping us on retainer because of the cost per lead that we're driving them because they could potentially do it themselves. It's mm -hmm. the big ideas that we bring and the shifts that we were able to, 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 to bring, uh, manage the YouTube beta that we got in for one of our clients as well. Yeah. And th that kind of stuff, you know, just kind of be able to bring a bigger picture. Cutting to edge, man. Well, it really is. It, it, I don't know of anybody that's spending more per month on marketing in the insurance industry than us. I mean, maybe there is, but I don't know. How do you get to eight figures in, in management? Uh, just grow the book, man, keep it going. <clears throat> you yeah. know, it, it'll be there, the market share's there. What's what's one thing that, as an agent out there, um, that's watching this, and let's say they have their own agency, their own team, their own office, um, what's some helpful tips to provide to them that are looking out and they're thinking, okay, this is daunting. I don't know what to do. Well, and maybe it's this free, free strategy session. I'll make but, it easy, man. I'll make it super easy. You can't do anything without a marketing budget and a percentage yeah. of that budget is digital. If it's yeah. not, you're crazy. Okay. So you, now you know how much meat's on the bone. Okay. So if you don't have a marketing budget, if you're just weaning it and like trying to buy leads here and there, like there's better ways to get leads that's more consistent. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What, what's it, what is it about that? What, why do agents jump from vendor to vendor uh, we, thinking that the next person's gonna have the secret sauce? We have a joke uh, in, in our staff where it's like, you know, 
leads are heroin and you know insurance agents are heroin addicts you know it's just like i gotta get it i gotta get my leads because at the yeah. end of the day it's that important it's their livelihood if they don't have anybody to talk to they're not have anybody to sell and so what i think is interesting about insurance marketing is that there's this perception all of us marketers are all using facebook okay so what what's the point of bouncing from one guy to the next and around and around and not learning anything why not like work with people that you trust to like execute a monthly strategy that you can learn from and adjust and pivot and grow and diversify. Yep. So that's that's one of the things that we try to do with our clients is kind of let the people that want to bounce around and, you know, that's okay. Like, th that's okay. That's not like a problem necessarily, but there's a better way to do it. And if you have a budget, then that'll get you there. Yeah. Okay. On that on that note, budget. W yeah. What, what kind of budget do they need? Uh, depends on what you're trying to accomplish and how big you are. But yeah. in general, the way I try to back into budgets is, What's the amount of lead flow that we need? And do we need, do we have short-term or long-term goals? And yeah. then we allocate the budget that way. Even so, people that are jumping around and buying leads, would you say they have at least a thousand bucks a month? At least, yeah. yeah. I'll always. Yeah. Yeah. Even little producers, you, ha you have to have people to talk to. So mm -hmm. you're buying leads from somewhere. You're buying, you know, the main lead sources that I see are, are tel teletransfers, which yep. are fine. Um, I think things are getting cracked down. I see a lot of lawsuits coming down the pipe and a mm -hmm. lot of, issues there but it's still a very valid valid way to get things done i think a lot of people are bringing them overseas right now it's kind of an industry thing that i'm seeing um but to me that's a little bit of whatever anyways that's <laughs> sketchy you know what i mean like i'm not like yeah, yeah, yeah. it just seems risky to me to, to have a big old operation in costa rica you know I'm, yeah. I'm sure it's a good idea i'm sure they ran their numbers but um it's either telesales leads direct mail leads or digital leads right now or networking growing your warm market and all that would you yeah. agree is there something oh, i'm missing absolutely. No, no, no. okay so you have people to talk to well they're all if you're not spending a thousand dollars a month then you're probably not growing your business you're probably <clears> just working your warm market and you're getting by and talking about how the market sucks even and if you aren't you're spending it on a part-time caller that's cold calling so you're spending it you know what i mean like you're, you're spending it are they are they though are they using I don't know if anybody not spending a grand a month. I don't either. So on leads and, or, I mean, or something. And, and if you're not, like the chance of you being part of the ninety-two percent is, is substantially larger. And you're listening right now, and you're like, I don't want to be, you know. So it, it is a big difference when when you talk to people, and I don't talk to anybody that's very successful in the insurance industry that doesn't have a healthy marketing budget. Yeah. Period. Zero people. That's true. I mean, if you're trying to work your warm market and do your networking thing only in one city and try and go to the B&Is and all that stuff, that's going to get you so far, but you're not going to be able to scale. You're not going to be able to be a big time. What was it about insurance for you? Well, first off, I met you, and yeah. I didn't really know. Honestly, I, I, I'll tell this story. <laughs> so but when I had my they agency, don't know this, so when I had my agency um, and I told Cody this before, um, I, I always told my staff, I trained my staff, I said, you know, we can do anything digital marketing. There's only two industries I don't want to touch, and that's insurance and real estate. You know, because I, I just didn't understand I didn't understand the two industries first off. I, it was so lead oriented. I didn't get it. Um, and then, but now that I'm in it, it's like, oh my gosh, it's yeah. so fun. There's so much. And now you're the number one marketing influencer in the insurance yeah. industry. I hope I am. I, I don't know if I am or not. I try I to mean, be, I, but I, I, I really feel like I have a lot of fun with other guys that are also doing marketing. I, yeah. I try, there's a lot of us, you know, to that are, are good. And there's a lot of people that stink. Like, in fact, I knew, I know this this agency that just got like twenty million dollars of, of venture capital to start an insurance industry in insurance agency, and I'm like, like, what do you need twenty million dollars for? Like, you and mm. we did this, we put this together. And, you don't. You know what I mean? It's like, so so, what are you doing with your twenty million dollars? Like, what's going yeah. on here? You know, like it's because they don't know what they're doing. Yeah. They don't. They don't. I'm telling you, it's, they may learn, but you don't That's need insane. you don't need twenty million bucks. So I mean, you mm. and what what you've done with your you know brand and growing and 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 building security marketing together has been so much fun man and to help people out and to get those text messages it's like you're really blessing my family with yeah. the marketing campaigns i'm able to you know it's just it's a lot of fun talk about the brand aspect you know uh, from a marketing perspective from your brain um if someone's out wanting to build a brand like because old school average age is 59 and a half so yeah p old school people don't think that branding and, and I'm not saying it needs to be the leader, like we, you know, we brand along the way, but having a brand, having people know you, getting attention, putting out content, all these different things, it, it's almost like I, I'm in the insurance industry, so I don't need, I don't need it. Well, that's like the old school method. I, there's two, what I would call like axioms that come to like, when it comes to branding. One, you kind of, you kind of get a certain level where your brand is important to you and you have money to invest. Yeah. If you're a newer agent, you really probably are going to have a tough time having any sort of 
like branding budget because it's expensive. It's something you're investing, mm-hmm. you're, you're reaping or you're sowing into something for, for later benefit. Um, but if you do your lead development the right way, then you can kind of brand along the way as a new agent, meaning you can set up a website, you can push people to that website, you can have your own you know uh, brand developed that way um, as a newer agent. But there's mm-hmm. a certain point where you hit a level where your brand is important. And, and that to me is you know when you start doing marketing campaigns, lead development campaigns with your own brand associated, investing in content, search engine optimization, um, investing in you know different various marketing methods that aren't fully focused on lead cost per lead. Yeah, see what I'm saying? That's what I mean by branding. Because there's mar- marketing. You have, in my opinion, you have got two really ways you go. You've got lead development marketing that are only key, key performance indicator that matters is lead cost per lead. Then you got your brand that's like. Um, I'm getting my name out there. I'm making myself yep. well-known seminars, getting mm-hmm. referrals, that kind of stuff. Um, you need to kind of do both, you know, yeah. and that's, that's how I perceive branding versus lead dev. I'm trying to get to where I'm personally spending seven figures just, just promoting me, us, what we have. Dep- I mean, you probably already are spending more than that. Depends on how probably you, so. whenever you count in 8%, you know, because yeah, at the end easily of the day, then, you know what I mean? Like, what, yeah. what is that? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, when you look at the numbers of 8%, you know, it's like. What's your, what's your thoughts on that, by the way? Because, because outside looking in, marketing guy. Well, before, before we partnered, yeah. I was watching your stories because you were, you know, we, I knew you were in the same town. And I'm like, this dude got Nissan Stadium. Like, who's this guy think he is? What in the world is he doing? This kid, you know, I was just kind of like, because I, I was, wasn't being condescending, but I was like, yeah, what is this guy doing getting Nissan Stadium from Springfield, Missouri? And and now I get it because, you know, with, with this last 8% nation that I was a part of, um, I, there's just something Which about. Which we should have went bigger with, by the way. Well, but whatever, whatever, man. I, I thought it was awesome. And this year, this next year is going to be ridiculous. I cannot freaking wait. Oh, my gosh. Do, do, do you think I mean, you're 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 seeing uh, a lot of the risks and stuff and you're seeing it pay off. Talk to someone out there that's like, you know, you're able to see it and be a part of it now. What, what's 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 there's a lot of people out there that are scared to take some of those risks, man. Well, you don't you don't you, you don't understand how consumers people work with the people that educate them. And so if you're not doing mm-hmm. anything that's educating your consumers by content or whatever, um, you're making a big mistake because that's who people are working with. Yeah. They are, period. So like, you know, for instance, if you can offer, let's just say you do Medicare, if you can offer a free three hour course of, of how to pick your Medicare plan or whatever that is, and yeah, then put yeah. that on your website, you know, get that content and add value to that person, they're going to work with you if they go through your, your marketing, you know, stuff. So, you know, you got to be able to craft good marketing funnels. You got to be able to educate and you got to be able to invest in this stuff, but it takes money to build a website. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, well, do I want to put $2,500 into a website or do I want to put $2,500 in a lead gen? It's like in the short term, yeah, lead gen, Mm -hmm. but you hit a certain point where it's like, you got to get the brand, the marketing, you know, your yeah. website's the chassis of your digital marketing. Your social should be part of that as the engine. Your SEO should be part of that. Your content should be part of that. Your All your testimonials of your customers mm-hmm. should be part of that. But your website's the chassis of your digital marketing. And a lot of people don't really understand that or they don't care about that or they don't get how important it is. Yeah. What was the first thing, random question, what was the first thing, maybe, it's just, maybe you were a teenager, who knows. What was the first thing you ever marketed and sold? Pumpkins. Seriously, I was. A, That's why I love these interviews. I didn't know that. Did you know that, Keith? I had no idea. I was a uh, nine-year-old kid, and I was like, "Dad, we." My dad had a garden, and so there's. I don't know about pumpkins, but basically, they. I guess they come up in the fall or something. I don't remember this. It's been a while. But my dad's garden was completely empty in the fall, and I, and he's like, "Dude, I could make you some pumpkins, and you can go sell them." I'm like, "Let's do it." So he'd plant me a bunch of pumpkins. I got him in a wheelbarrow. And like in the beginning of October, I wheelbarrowed the pumpkins from door to door and sold them for like five bucks a piece. Five bucks? <laughs> yeah. And I'm making okay. like, I'm like a nine year old kid making like a hundred bucks a week in October. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I bought Nintendos and like all kinds of stuff. Dude, that's was, awesome. And then I also, my mom did uh, swimming lessons. We had pool, um, we had pool lessons. So like we had a big old pool in our backyard and uh, we had swimming lessons and my mom did like, you know, hundreds of kids would come through. Well, all the brothers and sisters would come to swimming lessons. So I bought, I went to Sam's and bought bubble gum and soda and all that and just set up a table and just, it was fun, man. I even like scooted my Nintendo out there while I was sitting there playing Nintendo. And then I was, dude, I was making like 30 bucks a day, like as like a, probably a 10, 11 year old kid just sitting in my backyard yeah. selling the brother and sister, you know, push pops or something. So the entrepreneurial spirit's just always been there. It's just, you know, it's whenever I hear Jordan Belford talk about 
Yeah. If you listen to Jordan Belfort, he talks about how he had this, what was it, the shaved ice that he would sell on the beach. That was, it was just like that. Yeah. Like, I just had this knack for like, you know what? There's so many bored brothers and sisters while their kid, while their brother's in the pool. They're going to go get two bucks for their mom just, so, and the mom's going to give them two bucks because they just wanted to just get out of my hair, you know? So I was just like raking it in, man. I, I was like, you know, and I'd run out of inventory by the three o'clock and it was so fun, man. Those were the days, dude. That's awesome. Who, who's your, uh, who do you listen to the most? Because you're someone that listens and watches and um, maybe just maybe for fun and then maybe also from a you know, marketing perspective. Yeah, believe it or not, um, I actually like Jordan Belfort's content. You know, yeah, me too. I, I, think, I think he's a sales speaker at 8%. guru. He has a speaker at 8%. Um, and I, but people, I first, whenever, whenever you said I want to get Jordan Belfort, my first reaction was what? What did I say? Do you remember? Uh, I was like, no seemed, way, man. I'm it like, seemed Im- impossible. Well, no, I remember saying like, the dude's not a good dude, man. Like, I don't, res- oh, I don't, oh. I don't respect. Yeah, that happened. You know what I mean? That's like, right. I don't really respect the dude. Like, got famous by like, you know, making people. And then you, I was already dove into his content at that. Yeah. Point. So then I got into his content and I was like, okay, he actually admits that he was made mistakes and apologized and he did his time, like literally prison time. Yeah. And he doesn't like brag about it. He's in fact, is you can tell no. he's remorseful, you know, and like, but yeah. the dude's a salesman. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so I, I respect his content, um, and I, I, I listen to it. Um, I also just listen to random YouTube videos all the time. I'm probably – if you looked at my YouTube watch time, I bet you I have 13 to 15 hours a week, you know, Whoa. of listening. Yeah, I mean, listen to YouTube all the time. So I do listen to Grant Cardone. I do, too. I listen to um, – You don't connect as well with him, though. No, no, but but that's okay. I mean, he's still got decent content. I, 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 I like his three- or four-minute – videos about him just kind of like have you ever seen those conference table videos where he kind of talks to his team yeah, yeah i like yeah. those those are I good too. i don't really love the way he treats people most the way he, pers- he beats his chest pretty hard yeah and i don't but whatever you know he, he even says you know you want to push away half the crowd and attract half the crowd right there i think go. i'm kind of the, the, the crowd he's that, attracted me for some reason well i'm he's a super successful guy so good for him That's you know true. um but yeah i mean it really just there's all kinds of different podcasts I listen to, you know, but I like, uh, it's just random humor. I like stand up comedians podcasts. So like the fighter and the kid, which you probably don't know. You know what I mean? <laughs> you but told Joe me Rogan is fun. You told me about it. Yeah. Joe Rogan. You've talked a lot about. They did last one that this guy last night, the, the Queens of Stone Age. It was a really great interview. So, yeah. but it's just, I like people. And so I like listening to their perspectives and I really like long form content. That's why the favorite, my favorite content that we do is mm-hmm. the podcast and all that. Cause I like getting to know people. And I've had a lot of people say, that come to work with us that say, I've watched your videos. I want to work with you. I don't really know why. I just, you're, I can just tell that you care. And we wouldn't be able to do that without long form content. So. That's it, man. That's true. That's true. What, 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 what do you think, uh, looking forward in the insurance industry as we got a couple minutes left, um, what do you see happen in the next decade? I you know? see a boatload of money going to social media and I see costs increasing extraordinarily yeah. I see our cost per lead uh, the window of social media lead development it like the heyday is I think it's it's coming not to an end but it's going to be much tougher it's just like Google so like yeah. Google AdWords in the beginning they were just printing money whoever got into that first you know just was printing money because it's like People were like, well, I don't want to pay for website traffic. But people that understood it were like, oh, gosh, I'll pay for as much as Ty, I can get. Ty Lopez was one of those dudes. And they, and they were getting, you know, 20-cent clicks that are now $20 clicks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's coming. And so what's going to happen is is you're going to have to diversify your lead source. Like you, you, if you think that you can just run lead forms on Facebook forever, you are absolutely wrong. Like mm-hmm. it is not going to happen, I promise. <clears throat> I'm already seeing a shift that's yeah. going from – uh, lead forms to other ways to use social traffic that are much more advanced um, that you're not going to be able to do. The random person isn't going to be able to do. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be able to do unless I had thousands of dollars to, to, to practice over our own stuff, you know? So True. I see social drying up. Um, I see us needing other digital lead sources. I, I see, I don't know, I see the digital wave being um, more important than ever, but I, I think it's going to have to be earned. I think there's going to need to be a good website with a good search engine optimization base uh, with social media being a part of that. I don't think we're going to be able to just lean on social for our lead development um, like that. I'm already seeing it happen where it's just, it's way hard. I mean, would you agree that it's harder yeah. now than it has ever oh been? I mean, it's 44% ad increase just this year, supposedly. Uh, that is going to continue to happen. 
and you have in order you've got to be able to prepare for that because there's a lot of businesses i know that are built around that as like the core secret sauce and it's yeah. not going to be that way forever there's it's, it's 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 unique because most people think i just need to figure it out and have control and do it on my own but even the biggest places that are doing stuff on their own are still using us in some way yeah no absolutely like we have it's a surprising. major it's, but it's always a great relationship though too because uh, we're not peacocks with our feathers up saying like I'm telling you guys, this, this digital world changes every three months. It yeah. does. And so you've got to have sharp people around you to kind of like be able to say, I'm trying this. What are you trying? Because there's so many like, like for an example, this gigantic call center that I was working with, you know, I was helping him from the lead funnel to the, get the inbound call because I had cracked that nut. But one of the things I was struggling with was potential med sup language and video content. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what do you think about this video? He's like, man, he goes, honestly, I would add this, this, and this, and this. And it's like- Collaboration. Yeah, and we're working, and it's like, and before you know it, it's like with our powers combined, you know, like all of a sudden now we're killing it and getting, you know, $6 leads where he was getting 12, and then we're getting, you know, on $1,000 ad spend, we're getting 60 call-ins and 198 leads or something like that. Where, but before I was getting half that, and he was getting half that. So it's like, you've got to like work with people that the whole, I've got the secret sauce, Cody, and I'm gonna. You're gonna have to pay me for this course, and I'm gonna teach you that course. It's bananas. And you're gonna be. You're gonna know perfectly, and you're gonna use it forever, and it's never gonna change. On the lead development it's side, go amazing. No, it just don't even it's do impossible. it. In fact, multiple times have we not had people at our retreats that have just paid multiple thousands of dollars yeah. for their course, and then still had us handle still this uses. stuff because it's like they make it almost so complex. Yep. And it is complex. It is. So, dude, you're an influencer. You know it. Thank you for letting me be an influencer. Your I'm, boss, I'm, bro. I, hey, and you, I, to be with you and on your team has been a lot of fun, man. Thanks, buddy. We've had a lot of fun. We've won. We've taken some bruises. But, man, overall, sure. dude, we have, like, had a lot of fun, man. Oh, it's been a blast. It's been, like, the been most fun I've Hopefully ever had. Hopefully you've enjoyed the journey watching this. Do me a favor. Schedule a free strategy session with this dude, okay? Click the link below. Yep. Fill out your information. Yep. Let us know your problems, what you're struggling with, and Landon can help. Yeah, we'll just talk. Do whatever we can. It's okay. free. You, you might as well take us up on it. Landon McCarr, Scourge Market. Thanks for being on Insurance Center. Thank you, man. Appreciate it, bro. All right. Thank you, guys. See you, buddy. See you next time.